Hi. I'm always afraid I'm going to bore people when I tell them what I do. Um, I'm a biochemist, and I study adipocytes. Those are the cells that make up fat. Um, my research, alongside thousands of other scientists across the world, helps us understand diabetes. Essentially, I'm a lab geek, and I love looking at cells under a microscope, and I love analyzing data and collecting data. And I know that what I do will never make for sexy headlines, and I know I'm not going to cure diabetes. And I realize that most of you will never know what I work on unless there's a freakish accident and I turn into a supervillain, which, according to Hollywood, is an occupational hazard. <laughs> most scientists, like myself, we don't do research for profit, and we don't do it for the promise um, of some new technology that's going to change our lives tomorrow. We do it to understand the world around us and hopefully to make it a better place. To me, each scientist is putting a brick into a cathedral of understanding where each brick rests on ones that have been placed there before it. I guess what I'm trying to say is that basic science projects are really complex and they take a long time to complete. Um, let me give you an example. We've known about um, diabetes for centuries. Even the ancient Egyptians knew about it, but they didn't know the cause. So we've known about this disease for over 4,000 years, but it wasn't until 1921 when some Canadian scientists identified the causative factor, which, as you probably know, is insulin. Before then, diabetics died at birth or shortly thereafter. But in 1921, the first patient treated with insulin lived into his 20s. But it took decades of research after that to move the field forward. X-ray crystallographers figured out the structure of insulin. In 1955, insulin was the first protein that was sequenced. In 1963, laboratories could make small batches of insulin that could be used to treat people. But it wasn't until 1978 that insulin was the first human protein made on a large scale by biotechnology. So it took all of these scientists with different expertise to tackle this problem that we've known about for millennia. As a basic scientist, you really have to be in it for the long haul. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That's OK with me. And I love unexpected discoveries. Let me tell you a story about spit. <laughs> there was this biologist, John Eng, and he was studying saliva, not from humans, but from lizards. And one of these lizards was the Gila monster that lives in the southwestern part of the United States. And he was doing these studies for discovery purposes, just to understand our world better. And what he found is that there was a hormone in the saliva of this Gila monster that was really similar to a hormone we had in humans that regulates blood glucose concentrations. But the hormone in humans is really unstable. It's only around for a few minutes. But the version of the hormone and the Gila monster saliva is really stable. And so it was developed into a drug for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. So without this very basic non-medical research, we wouldn't have an effective line of diabetes therapeutics that is used across the globe today. Basic science really affects your everyday lives. The study of electromagnetism led to the widespread use of electric power and the use of radio waves to communicate over long distances. Can you imagine no electrical power, no radio, no NPR? <laughs> I've never been very good at mathematics, but without calculus, the modern-day world as we know it wouldn't exist. Everything from skyscrapers, to particle physics. Studies by Bernoulli on fluid flow in the 1700s allows us to understand how a wing can lift an aircraft. I'm just hoping future studies on black holes can figure out where my luggage goes to. <laughs>
In Louisiana, we have a number of excellent institutions that are filled with basic scientists like myself that either study diseases like diabetes or they study synaptic transmission of neurons in the brain or they study fish or coral or birds to study evolution or they study bacteria that live in oil vats or in glaciers in the Antarctic and then there's the discovery of the smallest vertebrate on the planet. And these are just my friends in Baton Rouge. I hope this sounds like a sales pitch for basic science, because it is. And my selling point is the economic future of Louisiana. Perhaps you've heard basic science is facing many challenges. The recent American Nobel laureates are sounding the alarm bell for basic science in this country. Essentially, these geniuses are saying, wake up, America! The innovative research that facilitated their Nobel Prize-winning discoveries is not being done in the United States today. And the recent government sequester has had a negative impact on many scientists in this country, including myself. In these tough financial times, our productivity is being judged differently as well. The British physicist Peter Higgs has recently said that no university would employ him in today's current academic climate because he's not productive enough. So, what I think we should do... Oh, another thing, another reason why I think you should be interested in basic science is most of our grant money actually goes to fund people. So over 50% of my grants go to fund students in the laboratory or support staff or research technicians. And so, Science grants have a really positive effect on the local community. So what I would like to do is enact a resurgence in basic science funding. Let's build a cathedral of science in Louisiana with all the foresight and dedication that people put into building real cathedrals. Let's not just think about the next one or two election cycles, but let's plan for decades to come. In the short term, this will stimulate the economy and employment and have a positive effect on the local community. And in the long run, it will make Louisiana a center for scientific innovation. And I think this is very important, because in Louisiana, we're affected by diseases at a much greater rate than they are in the rest of the country. One example is in Baton Rouge and the surrounding par parishes, the incidence of diabetes is 50% greater than the national average. It recently came as a shock to me to learn that epidemiologists are studying the population of Louisiana to figure out how bad the diabetes epidemic is going to get in the rest of the country. Let's turn this disadvantage into an advantage and invest in basic science. Here's a picture of a real cathedral. This is the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. They started construction in 1882. Now, they've made a lot of progress, but they still have a long way to go. They say that they'll be done in 20 years, but I don't think that they'll ever be done. To me, this cathedral is a representation of basic science, where each piece that is added is important and contributes to the overall structure. And to me, it's very beautiful. Thank you.